Hey everyone, Fuse Man coming at ya. So, about two years ago, which is kind of crazy to think about, I made this video on how you can get VRTK working with SteamVR 2.0. And while SteamVR hasn't actually changed all that much in that time, VRTK has. And so I wanted to do a very short updated version on how you can do that. So, switching over to Unity here, we have an empty Unity project. First thing you'll want to do is actually go about importing in SteamVR. Once SteamVR has finally finished importing in, you'll have these assets here, and now we can switch gears to getting in VRTK. So for VRTK, I would head over to VRTK.io, which gives you the list of all of these Tilia packages. Now what Tilia is, is basically the broken down version of VRTK into a bunch of different smaller assets that'll allow you to basically go in and pick exactly what you want for your given project without having to blow and get everything all into your project, which just kind of increases the overall size. And I think that's an amazing addition with Tilia. So for starters here, all of them are located here on this NG or NPM registry, and we'll need to specify that within Unity. So switching over to Unity, there are a few different ways you can do this. So the way we did it in the old video was you would go to your file explorer, you'd go to packages, you update this manifest and you can copy and paste the scope registry as well as whatever specific packages you want to import as well as their, and then their dependencies automatically would import. The new way, at least, uh, I don't know which version this was added in, but if you go to your project settings, and there's this new package manager component here. What you can do is actually go through and then type in a specific registry that you want to customize. So let's go back here. The URL is going to be this one. Copy and paste that into that. And then we just specify the scope. And save it. So that adds our NJ NPM registry to our package manager. And actually, if we go in and check our packages, check the manifest, you'll see that that was added in successfully. Now, because of that, we can go ahead and close this, close this. Let's go back to our package manager and we'll click add package from, it says add package from get URL, but that's not really what we are going to be doing. And we just need to copy in this exact Tilia package, which is the one that we'll be using for SteamVR. Head back here, paste that in, click add, and that'll start the import process for importing in the Tilia SteamVR VRTK package. So once VRTK has loaded in, we can just double check that under our packages. You'll see Malambe, you'll see Zinnia, you'll see your SteamVR SDK. So if we head over to runtime, we'll go to prefabs. We'll just go ahead and drag and drop in our camera rig. You see up here at the top is the linked alias. So this is what basically allows VRTK to listen in for all the input that's coming from SteamVR. Below, you'll see all of the SteamVR specific stuff. So the camera rig, left and right controllers, the model that'll get spawned in, et cetera, et cetera. That, that is all located here. Uh, some of this is kind of custom. So you can see here, there's a velocity estimator that is provided. So that will just kind of monitor the movement of your controller and track the velocity, which I think is relevant. And that's how that's all hooked up. And that, that, that's perfect. There's some additional things under here that are under the shared resources under scripts. So if you go specifically with input, that will basically serve to um, translate a lot of the input that's coming from SteamVR 2.0 into VRTK. And so we could, we can just quickly take a look at this, but I think the first thing to do is actually take a look at input for SteamVR 2.0. So if we head over to SteamVR input, you'll see that we're missing the input files that are associated with being used for SteamVR. And those need to be compiled first before we can actually practically even go about using these Boolean actions. The way this works is all of these are just actions that get defined and each action can be either a Boolean or actually more broadly, Boolean, vector one, vector two, vector three, a pose or a skeleton. The vast majority here are going to be Booleans. And then 
And then if we open up the bindings UI, what you'll see here is how those actions can then be mapped onto the different buttons that are relevant to any VR controller. So you'll see here the grab grip then gets mapped as a button here for, for the grips. Trigger similarly is this interact UI action, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It'll be up to you if you have custom actions to define those and then end up publishing them as part of your Steam VR 2.0 uh, game, whatever whatever that might be. You can save them as personal bindings. You can save them to the workshop uh, for anyone else to download. But these will be specific to your games. Uh, but the advantage being that players can remap them if they really want to. For now, we'll just stick to the defaults, but that, that's just something really to keep in mind. Like one, if you ever want to figure out what is actually happening with each of these actions and how they map. Two, if you want to customize them yourself. One of the things to, to note though, is you have to have Steam open in order for this to actually work. So um, ju just a side tangent, just having Steam VR open, which I've have, had done in the past, doesn't work. So you make sure you have Steam open as well. But okay, great. So we have actions. We now need to map these into VRTK. And that's where if you go under shared resources, scripts, input, these all these four scripts really come in and start to make some sense. We can actually open up one of these scripts really quick here just to, to quickly understand what's going on. And then let's also, uh, here we go. Let's also just kind of instantiate one of these and try it out. Um, First, let's just create a quick game object, drag and drop this on. And what you can see here is basically a template for a Boolean action. And then these Boolean actions can be used among any of the other objects that are happening within VRTK. So we, we have a Boolean action here. And on this script, what you'll see is this basically links to a Steam BR behavior Boolean. What is that? So if we go and find that. So Steam VR behavior Boolean is what allows us to map those actions into things that we can actually use within our Unity project. And you can see here all of the default actions that we had created before. So if we want, say for example, the teleport action that happens on, let's say the left hand. And then once we have this hooked up, we can really bring this into anything that we want that is VRTK enabled. And you can go through the giant list that's here for locomotion to interactions to indicators, you name it, right? And that's kind of the beauty of how this is all hooked up. So let's say the one that I'm familiar with is say with using interactables. So let's say you wanna do this with interactables. So you just copy and paste this link here. Let's go to the package manager again click add package from git URL, click add, give that a second to load. And once the interactables are in, we should have another interactables folder here. You can just go to runtime. If you want, you'll need to set up an interactor and then an interactable. So we can just drag both of those prefabs in real quick. And then once we have our interactors, we just need to define what is the Boolean action in the velocity tracker. So the velocity tracker was provided here for the left and right controller. So we just need to assign those appropriately. And then on our Steam VR Boolean object, we just need to drag those both into our, our actual object here. One thing to note here is actually because we now added a Boolean enabled action within our project, we now have that linked Boolean behavior. So we can just go ahead and drag that and drag and drop that on. This is the left, left hand bool. And then we'll just create another one for the right hand. And then just assign those to our interactors. And so now we have interactors. Now we just need an interactable. So there's a few samples just like that. Uh, there's, I think, physics on this guy. So you might want to include a plane. 
so that you're not uh, making it just fall to the ground without being able to grab it. And then we can go ahead and let's just set the scale to be like half. And then give it a try. Okay, so as I was testing, a couple things I just realized uh, that I made a mistake on. So one is you'll want to use the interact UI action just because that'll be mapped to your trigger by default. So that's convenient. Two is the interactables by default don't actually do anything. <laughs> So you'll need to actually set up a primary action um, and you can also set up a secondary action, but the, the simplest one would be to do the follow action for your primary action on the interactable. And then a secondary action you can just set as like say swap so that you can drop it and then switch to a different hand. So I'd recommend those two just to, to just get yourself situated. But other than that, uh, you can now hit play and it should work. There you go. That seems to have done the trick. And so, yeah, uh, no coding needed. It's very simple, very straightforward. Um, I think this is a pretty good place to start if you are at all interested in getting started with VR development. I think it's really cool that it's kind of gotten to the point where you don't even have to code anything and you can start putting together a bunch of these prefabs to really build out your own VR game. So hope you guys enjoyed and thanks so much for watching. So I'll see you guys in the next one. This confused man, and I'm signing out.